97.1 WSME. Live and local. Real talk starts now. And, uh, and uh, it's another yeah, week. It's another it's week. Another week. Uh, oh, my goodness. It is Monday. Good morning. I'm Rayford Brown. I'm Kelly Knapp. Good morning. I'm Lee Barrels. There was a couple of little delayed reactions there. No. I, I, I was... <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great weekend? Good weekend. Mm -hmm. Get through the storms on Wednesday, uh, Friday, right? That was crazy. Yeah. Did you ever get your internet and power back? And all that yes, that messed it up. My mom's jeopardy. She was not a happy camper. Aww. Yeah, we watched it last night. But I lost internet and cable. I the did. internet came on about an hour later, so I went to internet spectrum and mm -hmm. watched TV. I don't know when the cable came back on. Well, I just have internet. Not, mine took longer than yours. But, yeah. I think you had you had said on Facebook that yours was already up. Mine was still down. Oh, was that you, what it was? Yes. Okay. You had localized uh, stuff over that way. Our power just, we lost power for a little while. But I have Duke. Y'all have the better. Y'all have the better. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I had the best of all worlds, just in mm, case. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Mine didn't have to come on. Mm -mm. So, anyway. All right, Kendoki, everything else good, I hope? Yes, yes. Uh, remember where you were on this date back in 2013? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that day, uh, two bombs went off near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Three spectators wounding were killed. 260 other people in attendance were hurt four days later after an intense manhunt that shut down the Boston area. I'm talking about the greater Boston area, too. Police captured one of the bombing suspects, 19 year old uh, Jokar Tars, I forgot, Zarnoff, right? And I forgot how to pronounce it almost. His older brother and fellow suspect, 26 year old Tamarin Zarkov, Tomaz, they say they spell that, Zarnoff, Zarnoff died yeah. uh, following a shootout with law enforcement officers earlier that same day. The 117th Boston Marathon began in the morning from Hopkinton, Massachusetts, with some 23,000 participants. I don't even want to be in a crowd that big. Mm -hmm. At around 2.49 that afternoon, more than 5,700 5, runners still in the race, two pressure cooker bombs ex hidden in backpacks exploded within seconds of each other near the finish line along uh, Boylston Street. Three people died, a 23-year-old woman, a 29-year-old woman, and an 8-year-old boy mm -hmm. among the Scores of others who were injured, more than a dozen people required amputations. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I remember many, many years later, some of those amputees back running it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took courage. Yeah, it lots of courage. Um, well, anyway, they started looking for the people, and it took them like until the 18th, I think it was, 19th, sure. to get them cornered. Uh, they had also killed a cop, a uh, university cop, a police officer there. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, and they also hijacked a guy. Yep. They used him to get some money out of his ATM machine, and he managed to get away. And he's kind of the reason they got caught. Yeah, he yeah. called in the description of his car, and uh, of course they gave chase. Um, Went on a shooting spree in um, Cambridge. Yeah, Tamerlan uh, was seriously wounded, taken yeah. to a hospital. He croaked. Yeah. Uh, Zokar <laughs> managed to drive away from the shootout in the stolen SUV. He. He dumped that somewhere and took off on foot. And uh, that day, the Boston area was on lockdown. Schools were closed. Public transportation service suspended. People advised to stay inside their homes. Police conducted door-to-door -door searches in Watertown. And they had mm -hmm. what the, I hate it when the military, when the media describes this as military-style vehicles patrolling the streets. That evening, after police called off their search of the area, a Watertown man went outside to check Watertown. on a boat. He was storing in his backyard. Mm -hmm. When he looked inside the 24-foot vessel, he was shocked. He saw blood and a person. Turned out to be Zonar. Mm -hmm. Police soon arrived and took the guy who was wounded from the earlier gun battle into custody. He's been sentenced to die, charged with 30 counts of all sorts of mischief, including murder. Um, but he's uh, out on, he's not out, but he's being held in a supermax prison in mm -hmm. Colorado. Mm -hmm. Uh, his uh, cases on appeal. If there's yes. one that should go, I agree. It's him. Mm -hmm. I agree. And they should take their time and do it. Mm -hmm. He is not what this country is all about. And 
Yes, they were radicalized, but this was a lone. They were not part of any group or anything else. Nobody told them to do it. They just did it on their own. But they had been radicalized, according yeah. to information that came out during the trial. Correct. And other investigations. So, I don't know. Whatever's. Okay. Uh, A little bit more history. Bring it. On this day, 15th of April. The day we wait for with a song in our heart every year, but the song is, <laughs> oh, woe is me. Yes, it is tax day, and you have until midnight tonight to either get your tax returns postmark or to get on an airplane heading to a country that does not allow U.S. tax collectors to grab you and put you in jail. It's also the date that the 16th president of the United States died of a wound that he got while attending Ford's Theater in Washington the evening before. President Abraham Lincoln was shot by an actor at the theater who entered his box seat, then made his escape after shooting him. John Wilkes Booth was found after a 12-day pursuit hiding in a barn on a farm. Soldiers set the barn on fire to force Booth and his co-conspirator to give up. The orders were, do not shoot. Booth tried to put the fire out. Reports from people on the scene said it appeared Booth was preparing his weapon to open fire. He was shot by a sergeant in the Union Army from a New York regiment. The bullet severed his spinal column. He died in about three hours. Happened on this date, the 15th. Well, April that part 15th. Uh, Lincoln died on this date. So, anyway, we got a call bright and early. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning and belated happy birthday, young man. Thank you, sir. The young part is a, a fallacy, of course, these days, but thank you. <laughs> no, you're, you're, the, you're the new 50s. Oh, uh, Lord, then the old 50s are in bad shape. <laughs> What's up? Good morning to everybody in the studio. Ray, for you had a question on Friday. I didn't get a chance to answer because it was kind of late about the uh, student debt. And, you know, uh, Biden's writing more money than his mouth can carry. Right. Um, you were correct. We ultimately, the taxpayers, will do it because he's adding it to the already trillions and trillions dollar debt that our country owes. Yep. And so ultimately that falls back on. The taxpayers. And as uh, this this day, uh, this is the 15th of April, we should all think about that. Uh, you know, it's really sad. And, and um, I pray for Israel and, and the, the horrible things going on over there. And I know he's getting ready to write a billion dollar check to them as well. Well, we just is, we just used about that much in, uh, in, in uh, shooting down, I think, 80 of their of the 300 missiles and yes. drones that were sent their way. We. We yeah. already shot those down. It cost us a bunch of money for that, too. Yeah, but uh, what's sad is these the, the loans that we're paying off, and both my children went to college, but I paid for that out of my money. Mm -hmm. But these loans were paying off some four-year, eight-year loans, doctors, and et cetera, that can't afford to pay their bills back for college. And But the taxpayers that had no children, <laughs> no college students, are ended up putting the bill anyway. Yeah. Let me ask so you all a question. And Chris, you're the first one I want to ask this to you. Um, yes, in addition to those students who benefited supposedly from these four or eight years and 10 years, 20, 15 years, whatever, in college on student loans, those who benefited from that, who else benefited from it besides the students themselves? The colleges. And the professors. Sure. Let them let them pay it off. Um, I'm all for that, but you know they they only make a few hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> and then when they get their doctorates or their um, uh, you know get get awarded a doctor's degree, like um, his wife, who's not a doctor, people, she cannot perform any kind of medical stuff on you. It's an honorary degree. Yep, I believe, but you know. It doesn't benefit anybody. 
except that person that's trying that's running for re-election saying i did this did this did this but he really is not doing anything it's we the taxpayers that are doing doing it he's just forcing it on us yep yeah so um i hope you had a good birthday did and thank you started the show off on a great note and uh, we'll talk later this week no uh, north carolina state university i just pulled down one here chancellor randy Dave Woodson received $1.7 million in performance bonuses in 2021, made nice. him the highest paid public university chancellor or president in the country with a total salary now of $2.3 million. <laughs> Think about this too, Ray, for, and, and I'm sure some people have challenged it, so I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Athletic directors, these people, all that fall under these categories. Speaking of categories, let's think about this for just a minute. How many uh, positions in the government have secretary to the secretary to the secretary <laughs> to the secretary of something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time to think about it come uh, election time in November, but we got time to talk about it. Till then, enjoy this magnificent, marvelous Monday. Why do you bring it up? North Carolina State extended. The director of athletics, Boo Corrigan, threw uh, whatever time it was, uh, uh, increased salary to a little bit over $1.2 million and a potential bonus of $300,000. <laughs> Anything she, else you, you needed know, to know? I don't like that guy. Well, that's a whole other reason why. Yeah, I understand this money is supposed to help these students that can't afford to pay the money back. How about this? If every, if if half of them went to community colleges oh, yeah. and learned a trade, how much less would it cost us to hire a plumber, an electrician, people of go. this nature? And how many of those people that have degrees are not working right now because it's it's better for them financially not to work well, than it is and to I, work? And I will tell you, those people with the degrees that they've got, how many of them, when you, you know, we find it out all the time, how many of them are working in some other career other than the one they got their degree in, which, um, you know, student loans paid for. Whoa. Help me out with that one. We see I, it all the time. I, I, all, well, yeah, I mean, basically, that's the, that's the best answer is all the time. They take majors. Some take minors. Some just take that major. And in that major, I'll use a, uh, one for an example. Take uh, acting. You, you're, you, you have your main... <laughs> course that's what you're going to study to be you go to broadway you get shut down by covid next thing you know what are you doing uh selling hot dogs on the street corner with a mask on <laughs> and working getting... in retail working you know working in a business or something like like that it's not so much they didn't get their degree it hats off to them for getting a degree mm -hmm. but is it is it for what you did is it what you paid the money for and why are taxpayers having to pay it back there you and go. I know CEO may be listening somewhere down the road. He's going to talk about it, I hope. And I mm. hope I can hear it. <laughs> but Chris, but, I have a question. And when you're done, go ahead. No, I'm done. No, I'm just, I just ramble, you know me. Well, That's I just all. want to say that Chris and his wife, Kathy, have been working um, at the new Hope for Warriors yeah. lounge at the airport. How's oh. that going? It is going so wonderful. We're meeting so many young people um, that are just coming out of the school. The, School, but they're getting ready to go to their next base destination. A lot of times, Pendleton. Some want to go to Okinawa. Some want to go to Japan. But it's their love of the military and the discipline. That's the biggest thing. Is why do they join? For the discipline. And they go in as timid young people. They come out strong young men and women. And it's just it's it's been so rewarding, so beautiful, and so enlightening to spend four and a half, six, seven, eight hours a day with these people cool. coming in and out of the airport. Well, thank you for that. It just, it, oh, it, it's, it's my pleasure, Scott. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. And to talk, talk to these young people who come from all different states and all different nationalities. I'm talking from, to people from whose origin is uh, Ghana and uh, Africa and some of these other 
uh, location to mm-hmm. different states, but they all come back for this. They're, they're all doing it for the same reason. They love America and they love the discipline that they get in the military. Those are the people that give me hope for this country and this world. Well, good. I'm glad you keep mentioning that and just, just keep it up. Maybe we could Thank do a you, show out there we, one morning. Yeah, that would be nice. Well, we we hope to do it. By the way, another person you might want to get on there to the airport because because the airport has really got some great plans going. Yes, including they've added more flights. Oh yay. Out of OAJ. Good. Well, I'm still waiting for the pictures. <laughs> They're coming, Lee. I promise I get them to you today. Well, I'm okay. Not. All right, Chris. Thank you, sir. Day. We appreciate it. Thank you. you take Thanks, care. Thanks, Chris. Sad news over the weekend. An Eastern North Carolina man apparently drowned after he fell from his small boat in the White Oak River in Jones County on Saturday. The body of 37-year-old Antonio Kinsey recovered about noon yesterday. North Carolina wildlife officers and various search and rescue units from several counties were assisting in the search. The, they used boats and drones during the search. A 911 call about noon Saturday reported that a man had fallen out of his boat near Long Point Boat Launch on the White Oak River. Two boaters in the area, they tried, but they were not able to find the missing man. Uh, initial reports, I don't know if they've changed or not. not initial reports had that his 11-year-old son was also in the boat. Yes, I, heard too. I don't know whether that has changed or not. I haven't seen any more information about that. So, And the other stuff is when they recovered the body, uh, he was not wearing a life jacket. True. Um, True. Folks. The water is cold. It might feel warm outside, but the water is cold. When you fall overboard, uh, you don't have a lot of time to regain your composure and hopefully get back to your boat. That's that's just not the way it happens when the water is cold. It's a very tragic story. All right, let's take a break. You're live at Local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m., WSME. We'll be right back. Freedom 97.1. Liberty Mutual presents How to Be the Life of the Party. Okay, first turn the music off, then ask for everyone's attention. Now, tell them that you customized your home insurance with Liberty Mutual and saved hundreds. Boom! Boom. Now everyone knows you're not just a pretty face. You have some brains inside that face that know how to save hundreds on home insurance. Woo! Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Based on recent survey of new customers who switched and saved. Underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates. Exclusive Massachusetts. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Feeling trapped with that old phone? Don't. Getting a new phone is easy. Come into Verizon and get one of our best phones on us with Select Trade In on Unlimited Ultimate Plan and get a plan that helps you save by only paying for what you need. Act now and get a brand new phone at your Verizon store today. $999.99 device payment or full retail purchase with new smartphone line on Unlimited Ultimate Plan required. Less up to $1,000 trade in slash promo credit applied over 36 months. Promo credit ends at eligibility. A plan every adult family member should consider is the pre-arranged funeral. It's the worry-saving thing to do for your family. Making pre-arrangements helps to alleviate the additional stress on family members that can come with arranging a loved one's funeral. Jones Funeral Homes prepaid funeral plan helps remove confusion. They make a practical evaluation of costs possible, and it's the best way to take an unpleasant task off the shoulders of the family. Call Jones. Jones Funeral Home at 455-1281. With locations in Jacksonville, Richland, Swansboro, and Holly Ridge. Chico's Tires, 2320 Wilton Highway is Jacksonville's oldest tire company. And now Jacksonville's newest tire company is Little Chico's, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard. Little Chico's carries all the major brands and all sizes, such as Michelin, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, and many others, and all new tires have warranty. In addition to a Great selection of new tires, Little Chico's has used tires starting at only $30. In addition to new and used tires, Little Chico's does brake service, minor auto and truck repair, expert custom window tinting, and towing. So if you need tires, new or used, brake service, minor auto and truck repair, expert window tinting, or if you need a tow, visit Jacksonville's new tire store, Little Chico's, 1675 North Marine Boulevard. My phone, 910-333-0473. For Little Chico's Tire Service, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard, right here in Jacksonville. This is live and local Real Talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. 
got a severe got weather a severe tip. Weather tip right here. Uh, it, it's a brand new week, and the weather is looking pretty good. The only note of severe weather may be a stretch, but definitely worth our attention. With springtime breezes like we have, and extremely low humidity in the 20 to 25 percent range this week there is a definite increase in the possibility of wildfires across eastern north carolina please do not leave any fires regardless of how small unattended a gust of wind can carry smoldering debris to extremely dry by woods and forests dry underbrush can be volatile if a burning cigarette butt is tossed from a car's window if you're forced to pull over because your motor is acting up listen up perhaps you have a flat tire try to find a place that isn't on top of dry by weeds or grass. Any number of fires have resulted from the hot underside of a car, especially around the motor, setting the dry brush on fire. Bet y'all didn't know that, did you? The, hey, hey, it can blow your car up and everything else around you. The, the severe weather tip is a service of John Stars Electric for all of your electrical needs, whether it's new construction, the addition of garages or other outbuildings, or perhaps your old house is in need of an electrical overhaul. John Stars Electric should be your first choice to handle all things electric and while you're doing something some kind of remodeling around the home now might be the perfect time to talk with the john stars team about adding a standby generator always on hand when the commercial electric service suffers one of those interruptions generally caused by severe weather but we can't discount events like car crashes or fires that take down transmission lines nothing like having the peace of mind that your generac generator is standing by to take over during those times of power interruptions you Ladies could have used it this weekend. Yep. That's why we say power up your life with a Generac generator from John Stars Electric. Call 910-989-1908 today. It's all turnkey, worry-free. Again, the number to call, 910-989-1908. You're live and local, and we'll be right back. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is... Topsail area's only local newspaper and print. Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Cino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Cino Italiano Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Cino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. In a season of falling temperatures and rising energy bills, your local Bryant professional is always ready. Standing by to protect your home's comfort and defend you from uncomfortable temperatures and the higher energy bills associated with them. Ready to do whatever it takes for your home, your family, and you to be comfortable without breaking the bank. Because when the temperature falls, that's when your local Bryant professional turns up the heat efficiently. Call Daily Feed and Air Conditioning at 346-431. One and let them keep you comfortable this winter. Down East Heating and Air Conditioning serving our community for over 25 years. Also, Down East can help you with your home guttering needs. Call Down East today at 346 4311. Bryant, whatever it takes. Hey, it's your afternoon guy, Chris Hollywood Man. I want to invite you out as we broadcast live with the Freedom Crew at the Coastal Bank and Trust, Jacksonville Oslo Sports Hall of Fame. With the law offices of John Drew Warlick, it all happens at Sturgeon City, 50 Court Street, right here in Jacksonville. Tuesday, we'll be there from 4 until 6 with Sports Talk's Chris Rayner. He's got a bunch of friends coming by. Bob Warlick may stop by, and hopefully we'll be chatting 
with the 2023 and 2024 inductees and past inductees and dignitaries. It's going to be so much fun. And listen up. It's all on Freedom 97.1 WSME. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Our money forecast is brought to you by each day at this time, Community Prevention Services of Jacksonville. Later this morning, local law enforcement agencies are going to be revealing some of the work they've been doing for the past couple weeks involving a growing problem, not just in Oslo and surrounding area, but across the country. It's called vaping. They got a news conference at 10 o'clock this morning. I'll be there and hopefully we'll have the sheriff in here with us tomorrow. Community Prevention Services this is recognize the problem in the beginning, and the team has been counseling young people about the dangers of this habit. The counselors will tell you that all too often, vaping, supposedly innocent and safe, is anything but. Parents, you need to know what is going on. You're not going to get the full story, not even a half-truth from your kids. Talk with the staff at Community Prevention Services. If you think there's a problem in your home, you can bet that the problem is definitely there. Community Prevention Services accepts most insurance plans. Give them a call today at 910-353-0972. That's 910-353-0972. Offshore today, the beginning of a few good days. Southwesterly winds 15 to 29. Hot seas 3 to 5 feet. Dominant period 5 seconds. Sounds and rivers choppy. Tomorrow, southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots. Seas 2 to 4 feet. Dominant period 7 seconds. Sounds and rivers a moderate chop. And on Wednesday, southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots. Seas two to three feet sounds and rivers a moderate chop today sunny high of 88 winds 8 to 11 miles an hour with 20 mile an hour gusts tonight clear low of 63 and still gusty tomorrow sunny high of 85 tomorrow night partly cloudy low of 61 and on wednesday partly sunny high of 80 but gusty again hello bill thanks for holding what's up yes yeah i was calling up i guess with uh the rapid expansion they've had, you know, throughout Barnesville County. And I was thinking, like, uh, some of the businesses and some of the uh, um, just massive amounts of uh, uh, housing developments going in, residential uh, developments. Do they, like, when they plan those, the companies that plan those and put them in, uh, do they also support in return, you know, for doing their, all this building, do they, you know, come up with like the fire department that's going to have to be nearby because the closest one is, you know, this many miles away and would take, uh, you know, so much time to get there. And, you know, thinking of like the uh, Hatteras Yacht Factory and stuff, you know, it's just shit, you have all those petrochemicals catch on fire there. Uh, how many fire units would it take to hold that and contain it to that factory so it didn't spread? And, you know, what's the closest ones? Do they do they help support, you know, that kind of thing in the county by saying, well, you know, we'll uh, put in a fire department close enough to us for you and pay for it, you know, buy the fire trucks, buy the have enough uh, fire hydrants, et cetera, so it didn't spread to all of the, the timber, and, you know, around, adjacent to it and surrounding it, and, you know, just spread throughout the county. Do they do, they do stuff like that when I, you're planning? I, 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 honestly, I do not know. Things? I think that during the planning sessions, they will take into account whether they're what uh, the infrastructure that will be needed, whether that includes fire departments or, or whatever. I do not know. Uh, I assume assume that for uh, residential developments, they would include uh, some sort of planning dealing with schools. But we also do know that uh, the more people that move in here and that they're paying taxes like property taxes, um, the businesses that move in here and they're supposed to be paying property taxes, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, there's something something taken into account when that comes to pass. Yeah. You know, and I've always, like, I guess I have to be in in the armed services and all the precautions they take for distancing, uh, different flammable items, and you know, like you can't even, you know, these things you can't keep in inside a building. They have to be so many feet away from 
in the building. And well, there are fire codes in the county as well. There are certain things they cannot yeah. do, city and county. So yeah. fire inspectors you know, generally inspect them. In any, every city I've been in, that you always see these like massive gasoline stations, and you know they're surrounded. You know, it's like you know, ten feet is the next residential uh, apartment buildings and stuff right next to it or adjacent to it is other uh, commercial uh, uh, buildings. But, you know, to say if there was ever a fire in one of those things, besides you see in movies, you know, how uh, how do you keep it from spreading to all these other uh, things? You know what I mean? They're, they're, there's some of the distance between the gas stations are in a downtown and uh, the next buildings are like, you know, five feet, you know. So, it is, you know, it just it hits me as the, the, they should have it sort of separated. But, you know, that that's just been a, a thing of convenience, you know, getting it where you can pump it. And, and luckily, you know, throughout the country, we haven't really had any big gasoline fires. So, okay. uh, uh, you know, it just hits me as like those, that's probably one of the most dangerous and things you could possibly have and it's just a, a routine thing you don't think of it you know sure just because you have to gas up so. yep yep okay bill uh, next time we have the uh, fire marshal in here or um perhaps uh, from the the county we'll county, have uh, county and we'll have a, a you know a chat with them and find out now, what kind of plans, if there are any, and uh, what kind of precautions that they take around big uh, industrial operations or commercial operations, as well as the, yeah. the you know residential uh, buildings? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, it just it just hit me is after being in the armed services and all the precautions they take, you know, for like gasoline stations, is pretty far away from everything, you know. Sure. And then, like uh, when you refuel for gasoline rather you know diesel you may have closer in your areas just because it's less flammable and then uh now wait a minute the gas stations the aboard uh, the base and they're the ones at midway park they're they're fairly close to residences or, or commercial buildings right so the one on the one at, uh let's see uh it's it's near the px etc it has a little px convenience store there uh -huh. but uh, it's near the highway, so it's like in the fire department, they have fire there, so okay. it's right across the street. So if there is anything, they just walk out the door and they can put it out, you know. Okay, well, good. And then they have the, Saves gas out the way. Yeah, the big one on base is is pretty far out from anything except the uh, the power plant that, or the steam plant, and that's, and that's a good distance from that, too. Okay. So, you know, they, they take that spacing pretty serious and they got above ground tanks on one of base with holding basin should it leak etc so i think they got a fireproof insulator around it and brick too so all right well good mm -hmm. hi bill hey yeah, man, appreciate they, thanks for your right. thanks, observations bill. appreciate it i have two things okay one i want to clear up something that um chris had said when he called in this morning jill biden's degree is not not honorary. She has a doctorate in education. I looked it up. Okay. And she has been a professor of English at Northern Virginia Community College. I did not know that. Um, but I thought it was an English degree that she had. She has two masters in education in English from Westchester University and Villanova. Okay. And then she got her doctorate at University of Delaware. Yeah, I think the point that he was trying to make, she, he's not, she is not a medical doctor. No, she but, she's a le, no but she is so a legit doctor. Doctorate. A doctorate, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the second thing I have is I was reading this earlier um, it's something I did not know but I think it, it even though I think things have definitely changed since 1993 with domestic violence it is interesting how some of the mindset it's still going on I was reading this about Nicole Brown Simpson oh yeah and one of the times that she had called um, 911 when he was trying to break down the door and she's heard on the call telling him he finally got in and he um, was, she was t telling the police send the police. And as soon as she gave his name, the dispatcher's whole demeanor changed. Mm -hmm. And like, in other words, because then the dispatcher 
officer said to her, now she's, and let me preface this by saying, the police had already been called eight times. Mm -hmm. um, she, the dispatcher said, so basically you guys have just been arguing. And then something that irritates me to know in and no, I would love to. broke in. Is he upset with something that you did? Uh -oh. That's what the dispatcher, this is on uh -oh. tape asked oh Lord and i Martha. think this is asked a lot even now and i th i think this goes to show the level of training that i think still needs even though this was 30 years ago um some of these type mindsets are still there even when you have people especially when you have someone in a position of power or authority i um, haven't seen that not in recent years. Well, I've seen it now, here would, with a magistrate trying a uh, client trying to get a, a DVPO and wasn't given one. Mm -hmm. I think there's a level of training that some of the Onslow County magistrates, and I'm going to go on record to saying it, need to have regarding domestic violence. Um, I think sometimes law enforcement still needs to have, I think they need to have refresher training. I don't think any, especially in, in public service, do they ever need to have one training and then that be it. I mm -hmm. think it needs to be refreshers yeah, um, be for dealing with training. like mental health issues or de definitely DBPOs or or any kind of. But the is he upset with something you did is horrific. That's and, awful. And then OJ Simpson actually said to the police on the night the New Year's Eve call where he beat the mess out of her. Mm -hmm. um, he even said, "Y'all have been called, been here eight times, and you're going to arrest me now." Hmm. I mean, off. But she knew right before she died. She called for something he'd beat her up and she told him he's going to kill me and now she predicted it now for the dvpos the domestic mm -hmm. violence protection orders also known in, uh, officially as 50 bs mm -hmm. uh there are uh, th there are times what what is required of a uh, of a partner mm -hmm. so because it does not have to be a married person correct what is what is required of the partner um before such an order is uh, issued well i used to think evidence and I'm saying that I use the word used to because I had a client walk in, black eye, photos, and a recording, and still did not get a DVPO mm -hmm. here. And this is in the last year. Hmm. Had a recording of the other partner. partner Threatening them. Threatening recording them. of the fight. The fight. Okay. Photos. So hands-on were like. Doctor visit paperwork mm -hmm. and still didn't get it. So that's a wrong thing. I am not. Uh, 100% in agreement. Now, that. let me ask you this. Was the individual that uh, the uh, accused, was he somebody special? Not, not in my, no, not, no. I mean, just, a, just an average, no, yeah. No position of authority. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that, no. Yeah, nothing like that. Just, wow. just a guy. Yeah. With a incredibly bad temper because this wasn't the first thing time this now, had happened. Question for you too is mm -hmm. uh, questions that I would ask mm -hmm. as the cop on the, on the, Scene. Mm -hmm. uh, what, first, I, I assume the cops were called. They were. And they had said, you go here talking to the guy. Why didn't they arrest him know. on the scene if I, they found physical evidence? I agree. Do not know. Because that's pretty much required mm -hmm. these days. If mm -hmm. there's physical evidence mm -hmm. on the scene, at the scene, yeah, you don't have a whole lot of choice anymore. And well, if you ask her, it's because, quote, some of his friends are cops. Now, I mean, I, that's I, her I, statement. I don't buy that. Yeah, but I don't know. Cause cops yeah. arrest their friends on yeah. a regular basis. I have now. Yeah. The uh, the other thing is, what kind of did she have a history? No, none. So he had not called the cops on her. No, hmm. no. Okay, just Nothing. asking. Yeah. Those are the kinds of things that I would be asking. Yeah. Either they're on the scene as law enforcement, but I'm not a magistrate, so mm -hmm. I don't know how they think. I know how they should think. But yeah. I don't know how they think. Yeah. So anyway, I okay. Just read that. There, there's some questions, yep. uh, and hopefully that was a very isolated incident. And did they ever? Or get her DVPO? Eventually, she ended up um, with another magistrate ma or a well, judge. Well, mainly because it went to a judge. Mainly because another incident occurred where severe injuries. You can go straight to a district court judge yeah. or a superior court judge. I with think a two. family member intervened, and they went straight to a judge. I think the family may have known the judge, or so, I don't know. Well, yeah, but they but they got it without going through the magistrate. Yeah. I'm not exactly certain how that happened, but yes. Okay. All right, let's take a break. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME, 910-333-0139. We will have a call. We're, we're chatting at 8 o'clock this morning or a couple of minutes after with 3rd District Representative, the Dr. Greg Murphy.
Fate. You're live in local Real Talk. Don't go away. WSME. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many more at your locally owned and operated Richlands Piggly Wiggly, where good things cost less. Down home, down the street, Highway 24, Richlands. Prairie Fresh Bone-In Quarter Sliced Pork Loin, $1.59 a pound. Family Pack Center Cut Bone-In Thick Pork Chops, just $2.59 a pound. Half Cut Boneless Ribeye Loin, $9.99 a pound. Whole Sirloin Tips, $3.99 a pound. Springer Mountain Farm Split Fire Breast, just $2.99 a pound. Boneless Ribeye Steak, $10.99 a pound. Delicious North Carolina-grown Red Ripe Strawberries, one-pound package, $2.99. And Sweet Extra Large Cantaloupes, $2.99 each. Enjoy down-home country cooking in the deli, seven days a week in the store. Dine-in or take-out featuring hot, fresh chicken. That will make you smile. Country Breakfast. Starts at 5.30 a.m. daily at your Richlands Piggly Wiggly Deli, and it's home to the famous Murrow Bowl. You can also take advantage of the fast, friendly pharmacy located inside Richlands Piggly Wiggly. Richlands Piggly Wiggly, down home, down the street, where good things cost less. Highway 24 in Richlands. Remember, say big with the pig. <laughs> Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan offices of Lane & Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane & Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane & Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years, with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an Appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at LANEDDS.com. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing specializes in residential Residential and commercial interior and exterior painting. In fact, they paint most anything except cars, including homes, businesses, apartment complexes, decks, and they do minor repairs, wood repairs, pressure washing, waterproofing, and more, including storm repair and cleanup. Southern Touch Painting Maintenance, Power Washing and Roofing, fully licensed, insured, and locally owned and operated by Roger Carroll Jr. References available and customer satisfaction is always guaranteed. So if you want to paint and maintain, power wash, or need a new roof, call Southern Touch Painting Maintenance maintenance and power washing at 910-939-0749 or visit southerntouchpaintingnc.com. Southern Touch Painting, maintenance, power washing, and roofing salutes our troops and is proud to be part of the continued growth of Onslow and surrounding counties. Hub for Heating and Air Conditioning, your trusted local carrier indoor weather team. Serving all of your heating and air conditioning needs since 1967, now offers residential and commercial duct and dryer vent cleaning and now offers expert residential and commercial plumbing service. In case of a power outage due to a storm or for any reason, be prepared with a Generac generator for your home or business. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning has Generac generators in stock ready to install today. Remember, better breathing comes with cleaner air. Let Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning improve the air quality in your home or business with professional air duct cleaning. As always, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning is available 24-7 for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing emergency needs. Turn to the carrier expert. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, locations in Jacksonville and Hempstead. Visit online, HumphreyHeating.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, since 1967. Relax, we're on the way. Freedom 97.1 WSME. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, okay, we're back live on local real talk. And is that Vic that we have, the mayor of Half Moon on the... Fine. Yes, Mr. Rayford, it is I. Happy post Good birthday. Morning, ladies. Yeah, happy post birthday. Yeah. Now, let me go ahead and offer you a happy birthday for next year. Your birthday will be on the um, on Monday next year. <laughs> the anniversary, <laughs> the <laughs> anniversary of your birth. We'll talk that over later. The anniversary um, of your birth. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I wanted to get away from the pleasantries and just make a simple request. Okay. When Congressman Murphy comes on the air with you all two questions that require just a simple yes or no answer. If Rayford, as host, you could limit uh, Congressman Murphy to that and then <laughs> explanation later. 
Okay. I'm probably not going to add, uh, tell the congressman he cannot respond with something more than a yes or no. This is not a court of law. Yes, but um, try to limit it as much as possible, please. Mm -hmm. right. Question number one. Okay. Did Donald Trump win the 2020 presidential election? All right, okay. was, did, president, did President Trump win the 2020 election? I will do it in this way. In your opinion, did Donald Trump win the 2020 presidential election? Because the facts are he did not. Okay, um, but uh, I would like to hear uh, Congressman Murphy's opinion, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Okay, question number two. Are offshore wind turbines killing whales? Are offshore wind turbines killing whales? Do you have evidence that they are? Uh, you can put it that way if you like. No, I'm asking you. So I'll have something to follow uh, up with. Uh, I, I, I'll offer my opinion uh, after Congressman Murphy um, has appeared. Because um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off the phone and just listen to you all. Because I know you're trying to clear the decks in anticipation. <laughs> Clear the decks in anticipation of a tidal wave coming over your boat. That's what you do, but uh, no, I got you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Did you write all this down so that we won't yes, forget Yes, I did. Them? Good. Because, you know, that's 12 minutes away. And not, you know, I mean, I am. As is so typical for weekend news on Chicago Southside, 11 people standing outside a family event were hit by gunfire, likely gang-related, Saturday night. An eight-year-old girl died from wounds, a one-year-old year old boy and an eight-year-old boy were struck multiple times there in the hospital in critical condition. A nine-year-old boy suffered a grazing wound on his finger. He was treated in the hospital. As is so typical, no one has been arrested. Police believe that two shooters were involved. A deputy police chief told reporters that it was not a random act of violence. It was likely gang-related. Well, no kidding. Gangsters have a stronger control over Chicago than the mobsters had during the Dillinger days. Seemingly, nothing is being done. There are those that demand tougher gun controls, yes, in a city with the toughest gun control laws in the nation. Cops know that the guns the gangbangers have armed themselves with are not legally owned. Cricks don't obey laws. I, that's some brand news, news for y'all. And every time you spend the time to follow the few people arrested on gun charges, like in one case where the bad guy was nailed for selling guns, stolen guns to thugs more than two dozen times, he was allowed to plead guilty. Hey, by the way, he was 19 years old. Couldn't have a gun, period. He was allowed to plead guilty to one misdemeanor count of illegally possessing a gun. No jail time. Pay the fine. And move on and go steal some more guns and sell those. Until the unduly elected prosecutors and judges are removed from their positions and tough prosecutors take over, South Side of Chicago will remain the lawless capital of the country. That's my two cents worth. Good. I agree with that. I can't argue it. Why? I want somebody to argue it. Well, we'll just keep the gun going. <laughs> um, early yesterday morning, um, a North Carolina man fell six stories to his death at a Myrtle Beach hotel mm. trying to escape gunfire from the hotel room. From his room? Yes. Um, Jorge Orlana, he's 27, died at just after 6 a.m. of massive upper body trauma, uh, he was fleeing gunshots from a sixth floor hotel room. And the pol Mobile Beach police arrived at around 1.30 for reports of shots being fired from inside the room. And they said no one was hurt from the gunfire and the firearm has been recovered. I don't know where he thought he was going to go. He's six floors up. Where, where are you trying to go, dude? He'd been better off going straight at the I guy. I don't know if he tried to jump, if he flipped over the balcony rail. I don't know, but that's just sad. But yeah, he was at what time in the morning? Um, one thirty in the morning okay. when the police were called. So I would suspect. I'm thinking I'll call other issues. Yeah. How um, old was he? Twenty seven. Where is he from? He's from Hendersonville, North Carolina. Yeah, he's a North Carolina man. Yep. And hmm. he was at they were at Hotel Blue. How many people were there? Yeah. Don't the say. But said everybody involved in the incident has been identified. Whatever that means. Yeah. Well, but the firearm has been recovered. Have they arrested him? 
Anybody for discharge of gun? <laughs> it did not say. Let me check Myrtle Beach news and see if it's this made national news just no, on the wire. MBF from Myrtle Beach might yeah. have a story. Let me see. Let's see if it says if this guy. Um, Nothing. Um, it's slow. It's loading. Yep, here it comes. Um, let's see. Did. <laughs> oh, my Lord. What? Ooh, okay. A lot more, huh? He climbed out the window and oh. tried to scale the building to escape, but, but fell. What in the world? Um, I, I, it doesn't say that they've arrested him. Jeez. Wow. That scared the crap out of me. Early warning detection devices. Lord have mercy. Look, no one could come in this yard without uh, us being alerted. Well, first of all, the electronic stuff gets them, and then the doggies get them, and yeah. then, then it's up to me if they get that far. <laughs> I mean, that's just... So tell me about so him again. he tried to climb the building. Climb down the building? Yes. He, he went out the window and tried to scale the building. Why does anybody think they can scale a building? <laughs> um, is the first thing. Oh. Um, I couldn't see anybody. I mean, good gracious. I've seen him jump from the third floor at the Holiday Inn to the swimming pool. Well, it just it doesn't say do anyone's been... Beach, a, yeah, right here in Jacksonville. Mm. It, does not say anyone has been arrested yet, but I would think there's going to probably be an arrest from somebody. So, well, if, somebody's got to be charged shoot with shooting. In the room. Yeah, for, discharge I mean, of the weapon in the room and shooting at somebody, perhaps, or whatever. I mean, and then if somebody in North Carolina, if that I assume would be a felony, it is in North Carolina, then somebody who dies as a result of that, that's called felony murder in North Carolina. Yeah. So, that's a death penalty case yeah. in North Carolina. I don't know what the laws of South Carolina are. Well, you know, Rayford, you and I were just a minute firecracker or something before we went on air this morning about the two oklahoma women oh yeah that went missing and were found murdered i've been following this story yeah there's a it's a it, that one's a strange one it, <laughs> even the comments somebody wrote the, my first thought was chicago uh -huh. like literally that's what somebody just wrote in here um some people are saying they wonder if this was some kind of drug deal i mean well Probably. i don't know if it's a drug deal but it's you yeah. know could be a who who knows what other shenanigans were it's going on. It's a big on there. hotel. And, I know uh, where the hotel is. You know, I've been in Myrtle Beach and yeah. late at night for some business stuff yeah. on several occasions. Good gracious. Things things get out of control there. I will tell you that in a heart. What you're talking about, two bodies have been recovered in a um, Oklahoma, in a rural county, uh, according to the Onslow, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Both uh, of the folks were the bodies were transported to the medical examiner's office trying to get identification and confirm the identification as well as the cause and manner of death. It's an ongoing investigation throughout the weekend. Is it that where they were looking for that mom that yeah, had disappeared? For, yeah, was, looking for her. Yeah. yeah. This comes less than 24 hours after the Bureau said they had four suspects in custody in connection with the disappearance of two Kansas moms. 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly were last seen on March 30th heading to pick up children before their car was found abandoned near the Oklahoma-Kansas border. Foul play suspected, according to police at the time. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation announced that on Saturday, 43-year-old Tad Burt Cullum, 54-year-old uh, Tiffany Michelle Adams, I want you to remember that age and that name, 54-year-old Michelle Adams, Tiffany Michelle Adams, 50-year-old mm -hmm. Earl uh, Cole Earl Twombly, and 44-year-old Cora Twombly, all of them are under arrest. This is a picture of 54-year-old Tiffany. Oh, mm -hmm. my. She okay. is the grandmother mm -hmm. of the daughters of uh, Ms. Butler. I forgot her first name. Um, Veronica Butler. She is the grandmother. It's been a custody battle going on. Oh, she wants yeah. the grandchildren. Right there. Yikes. Yep. Adams, uh, one she of the women arrested is, is the, well, no, Adams is the grandmother of Veronica Butler's children. I don't know who Tiffany is the grandmother of. Uh, well, it, she's not getting them now. Well, she this looks, is her. This is Tiffany. She looks what? 
This is Tiffany Adams. She is the mother of the, uh, the grandmother of Veronica Butler's kids. Yes. All four of those people are in the Texas County Jail. Two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. According to the Oslo, the uh, Oslo, why do I keep saying that? The OSBI, that's the Oklahoma mm -hmm. State Bureau of Investigation. Yeah. That was such a bizarre story when it came out and uh, them looking for the two women yep. who were just on their way to pick up children. Yep. So you knew there had to be something more involved in it. There's a lot more. A lot right. more going on. Uh, um, let's see. What, well, we're going to have news here in just a minute or two. Two uh, New York cops, a New York police officer and a deputy sheriff were killed in a shooting the uh, the man who supposedly shot them is also dead. A police officer and the deputy in New York were shot and killed Sunday evening, last night, uh, near Selena. The uh, sheriff there, Tobias Shelley, identified the two as a deputy in his department and a Syracuse police officer. Their names have not been released. The uh, guy involved, they call him the suspect, was also killed. It started about 7.07 last evening when Syracuse police officers spotted a suspicious vehicle in the area. And uh, the sheriff's office said in a news release, officers attempted to stop the vehicle, but the driver refused and instead fled the area. The officers lost sight of the vehicle, but managed to record the license plate. After checking the registration, they determined where the owner resided in Salina. Told you, you that radio will outrun your Car. Yes, the officers were joined by deputies, responded to the address, and found the vehicle parked at a residence. They asked for assistance from the sheriff's office because they learned additional information. The individual driving the vehicle might be armed. Officers from the city and county arrived at the residence, and they got there about the same time. Shortly afterwards, the officers and deputies were encountered by an armed man prompting an exchange of gunfire. They were looking at the vehicle and saw what appeared to be guns inside. They heard what sounded like someone manipulating a firearm from inside the residence. Moments later, they were there was an exchange of gunfire between at least one suspect and the officers and deputies. One officer and one deputy were shot, as was the armed guy. Sad. They were still waiting to search the house. No direct threat to the community. I, I said that one person there, I don't know if there were more than one was more than one person in the house or not. It doesn't say, but it kind of hinted like that. We'll see. Anyway, you just never know. There's no such thing as a routine call for law enforcement folks. If you're out there carrying that badge, remember that there's no such thing as a routine call. Mm -hmm. Protect your backside first and your partners. Right. Let's go ahead and take a Fox News break. We'll be back on the other side. Your call, so when we get back, you're live on local Real Talk Radio 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. WSME, Camp Lejeune, W246CJ, Jacksonville. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. Israel's War Cabinet's meeting now to discuss a response to Iran's attack Saturday night. President Biden will meet with Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed al-Sudani in Washington. The pair likely to discuss this Iranian attack against Israel that included hundreds of drones and missiles. Reports indicate President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the American Americans will not support or participate in a counter strike against Iran. Fox's Trey Yingst, a police officer, a sheriff's deputy, and a suspect are killed in a shootout in Salina, New York, outside a, high, a house after an attempted traffic stop. They heard what, what sounded like a, someone manipulating a firearm from inside the residence. Moments later, there was an exchange of gunfire between at least one suspect and the officers and the deputies. That's Syracuse Police Chief Joe Cecil. Stock futures are higher. Last week was the worst of the year on Wall Street. America's listening to Fox News. Freedom 97.1. WSME. It's live and local. Real talk. Okay, Nick, we're okay. back. It's about one minute after 8 o'clock. And on the phone with us, Dr. Greg Murphy, 3rd District Representative from the great state of North Carolina. Good morning, sir. How are you? Guys, how are y'all? Doing morning. well. Doing well. Well, we're, we're, we're hanging in here. The weather is, you know, it's just such an awful time. The typical... You know what? Sixty-eight <laughs> degrees at nighttime. About eighty yesterday around here. Yeah. Awful, awful. Don't, don't, uh, don't be a hater on me. <laughs> it's not too bad. It was actually, uh, it was actually okay yesterday in Washington. So, oh. Um, 
basketball. I, when I got a chance to go outside, it was enjoyable. Yeah, well, it's, it's a pretty time right now, but uh, we won't get used to it because we know things can happen in a heartbeat. Well, you guys are busy in Washington. Uh, you're catching it from all over the place, yeah. so appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Um, Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a very, very uh, spirited time as it is, um, <laughs> and especially with what's happened with Israel, what's going on in Ukraine, our budget issue you and uh, by all means our border invasion and uh, i think history will prove without a doubt we thought carter was the worst president in our nation's history and without a doubt it is uh, joe biden from delaware yeah no doubt about about that one um yeah, let's let's talk about iran and israel uh 300 missile and drones i guess the united states was involved in taking down about 30 about 80 of them i believe uh i'm sure there's a lot of money but uh, Biden says to hold off. He's telling BB to just, just stand down. Don't go shooting back at him. Nobody got hurt. Well, <laughs> you know, I, as a uh, member of uh, his buddy uh, Obama said that uh, Joe Biden had the greatest propensity to F something up. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's done. This is this is where this all comes. Think about that during the Trump administration. What crises were going on around the world? Minimal. If anything, maybe in Somalia, maybe a little bit with the Houthis. This is the, the world has erupted because of Biden and Blinken, Secretary of State, <laughs> um, Blinken's absolute incompetence. And I, I'll, I'll just, I'll always believe this going back right to what happened in Afghanistan. We showed the world that we were weak, that we were cowards, <clears throat> that we left uh, in the middle of the night, and that's not who. Uh, that's not who our military. Military is. It is a direct reflection on the president of the United States, and that emboldened uh, Putin to do what he did. It's emboldened China uh, to do the absolute uh, technological and everything that they're going to do to try to take over the world. And it's emboldened the uh, bad actors uh, in the Islamic terrorist state of Iran. And so I firmly believe uh, the results of all of these things is uh, Joe Biden's weaknesses and, and his inability to comprehend foreign policy. Hmm. All right. That's one of the topics here. And another one you mentioned, I, I will tell you, I, I, I count on my statistician here, Kelly, to keep me up to speed on things like the number of fentanyl deaths in the United States last year, 110,000. At that rate, I do the math. That's my, my forte. We will exceed the 300,000 people, Americans who were killed in three Three and a half years of World War II combat, and we continue to allow the deadly drug to waltz into this country with almost no resistance. Help me out. Where is our problem? You know, the main problem is that China has declared war in the United States, and <laughs> we uh, and are placating uh, of what, the, again, the same thing that this president is doing, placating China. That's a whole different uh, discourse, as it were, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> we've done Nothing. And while a, while a significant amount of this comes across our border, the majority does not. It comes through ports and some of the, the other uh, other venues. But still, there has been no ramifications, nothing. Our trade uh, our trade ambassador has done absolutely nothing. We're actually meeting with her this week. They still, China has declared war on the United States, and we're too damn afraid to, to, uh, to understand that they have. And this is what they're doing. They're killing 100,000 plus Americans every year. Um, and, you know, hackers are doing attacks on systems and we're sitting back uh, with this president and not doing a damn thing. And it's uh, it's an embarrassment to the world. Well, hopefully, hopefully something will change. Um, you know, you guys in the House and the Senate, uh, I guess you were not able to get together, according to some of so many of our or several of our callers on a regular basis to get together and that we could have ended this problem if you had passed the by partisan bill to give a bunch of money to increase the number of border patrol along our southern border and to provide other security measures, but y'all couldn't get together. So how do I respond to these callers? Well, well uh, that's absolutely false. It's absolutely false. Um, there needs to be more border control agents, so we absolutely <clears throat> wanted to do it. The problem with this, quote, bipartisan border bill are the poison pills in there. The, the fact that they would allow 5,000 new people 
people a day illegally to come in the country. Okay, not legally, illegally they come to the country. And the express purpose of what uh, Biden is doing with the invasion at the southern border is he's trying to change the electorate. He's trying to change who votes in the future. It is the biggest manipulation of voter fraud <clears throat> that is just right in our face that you can imagine. Uh, the, the congressional districts are always done according to population. And he's brought in literally the population of the state of North Carolina <laughs> in, uh, in across our southern border. And as we've seen, there have been so many um, folks caught on the terrorist watch list. We don't know how many are, uh, are here that we don't even know about. It goes to show you, NBC News, you know, I used to actually think that show was balanced. But, you know, Lester Holt and those guys are so far left. They love to point out that the percent of individuals and everything is always against Trump. The, the uh, percent of individuals on the chair's watch list was us with Joe. Well, yeah, we had, uh, I believe, 11 in four years with Trump. And the number of uh, the dominator people who got in was just a, a fraction. They've had probably 375, but they've had 11 million. So the mass, um, <laughs> let's just look at the mass. Your denominator is exploded. So your percent is going to be lower by definition. Yep. So guys, uh, I, you know, I don't know the quick solution to this, but the uh, quick solution in the other way is weakness. And that's what we have in the White House. And a recent message that I read from you to those of us who live in the third district. You ask us what we thought about the possibility that in 2025, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act would just go away. From information in your message, it seems that the tax cuts legislation was good for our economy. Why would a reasonable person want to take it away? Well, <laughs> there is reasonable and there's, there's insane. You know, it's, it's all because uh, I, we have a, a portion of our uh, members of Congress that... Um, have never seen a good tax cut they did, or, or a tax that they didn't like. They want to take the corporate rate back up to 43%. Ouch. And remember, 98% of the corporations in this country have, uh, have less than 100 employees. So these are your mom and pop shops. This is where every brand new innovation um, is coming out. It has come out. And so it's just uh, they, don't, they don't believe that um, decreased taxes – gives more money in people's pockets for them to spend. And it's, a, it's, it's unbelievable. They're absolutely toned up. So, yeah, that's where we are. And it's a very, very difficult spot if that's where we are there. Well, hopefully something will happen in 2025. Although we'll take care of that, that problem. We do have a caller who had a couple of questions we, he wanted us to ask you. Now, I'm not going to restrict you to what he said because this is not a, a jury a box or a court too, of law. Right? And Lee will also have a question. Uh, but he wants you to say yes or no. Give me one of those questions, Lee. Uh, did Donald Trump win the 2020 election? In your opinion? No, I, I don't. I don't think he did. Uh, here, here's, the, here's the deal. And, you know, I, I, why the hell are we legislating 2024? <laughs> Agreed. But without a doubt. And look, Thank I'm you. the one who can actually speak with this with full um, veritability or, or, or veracity is I'm on House, uh, the House uh, elections or House administration. We review the 2024 elections or the 2020 elections. We review that. This is what we do. And there has been, um, without a doubt, election integrity. There's nothing. There's not been a smoke in gun. There's not been one uh, that says, boom, it should have gone the other way. There are definite irregularities. But the bottom line is, I don't know why people are still talking about 2020. Agreed. Uh, you know, What's that? I, this we is Kelly. Agree. I agree with you. I mean, the, they need to move it's on. They're like beating a dead horse. It's been done. Let's worry about 2024. We're not going to erase what's happened. It's, it doesn't do anybody any good. Agreed. And so, so you know, as to the caller, you know, that's you know, if that's the one thing they want to talk about. That's up to them. That's, <laughs> that's free country, thank God. But it's like, let's just move on. I agree. I mean, this is this is just ridiculous. Here we are. We're talking about the 2024 election it's 2024 yeah I, I, actually i think um, this caller is going to agree with you right right so yeah. just it's it's kind of funny it's going back far on yes the other question okay had? the other question before i ask a good question yes. <clears throat> is oh, wow. are, are all 
offshore wind turbines killing whales? Yes. Yes, they are. And in my opinion, um, in fact, I've uh, after this insane rule that we fought for a year and a half, NOAA, it is pushed through that you, <clears throat> if you have a vessel of 35 foot and longer, you cannot go faster than 10 miles an hour out to uh, nine miles out to sea. And the number of whales, I believe, were killed in the last decade at the number of four, and three of those were killed by cargo ships. But they don't want to talk about the fact that um, windmills create a, a different sensory tone that um, throws whales off and is, in my opinion, from what I'm understanding, is leading to the death of more whales than any vessel ever could. But of course, it doesn't fit a narrative. It just doesn't fit the old clean energy uh, narrative. I, I look, I, I, I don't mind windmills. I don't mind windmills a lot. You know, I've go, been over to Holland. I think they're beautiful. Um, but the fact that you're attacking one thing when the evidence points otherwise is uh, typical for the Democratic Party. Now, my question is, in March of this year, you introduced a bill to ban DEI in medicine. Would you explain it to our listeners, please? Yes. And, you know, this has been a very controversial bill, which uh, is great because it wakes up people to the uh, destructive nature of DEI. And the DEI stands for um, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's, in my opinion, I fought this when I I was on the board of trustees at Davidson. It was diversity in everything. So in other words, which is a more diverse uh, group, five individuals that don't look like one another or five individuals that may look the same but think differently? So think about what the difference is. Think about how that works. And the second thing <clears throat> is <clears throat> equity. That means everybody gets a trophy, whether you earn one, deserve one, or not. <laughs> inclusion. Inclusion is inclusion in everybody to get except those who don't think like we do. And so this is now, you know, it got into higher education and now it is infecting medicine, not only in the admissions process, but really in the curriculum. <clears throat> and you would be appalled. I can give you pages and pages of examples of what's going on in the curriculum. The testing now, which is, lit, which is headed by the uh, American Association of Medical Colleges and Universities, which has all gone woke, um, in the MedCat, you know, this is one where it's supposed to be physics, biology, epidemiology, now has questions about climate change and social justice and white, uh, white uh, privilege. And then you move on. There's another test called the Casper test, which is basically biased against men. And then in the curriculum, you have uh, stuff, climate change or uh, systemic racism and all this other crap. And, you know, look, it's very Easy. It's just very easy. Do unto others as you would want done unto you. It's very simple. But what they're doing is they're continuing a cult of DEI in medical school. There are even schools and places out in California that you sign you, you sign a field oath. You profess a field oath. You will hold all of these principles of DEI. And you know, guys, let's go back to nineteen thirty three. If you you didn't sign Nazis, you were nothing. And we, to think that couldn't happen in this country, you're absolutely wrong. I've worked in Nicaragua for many, many years. Huh. Uh, you know, in, in, uh, in 2006, the Sandinistas, through a kind of trickery in the election, won control back. Well, in the next week, if you were a surgeon in a hospital and you did not sign up to be a Sandinista, the next day you were a taxi cab driver. <laughs> and that uh, that kind of stuff can happen. So um, it's polluting. And, you know, I've had a lot of medical associations very upset with me. Too bad. You know what? This is the field I've devoted my life to. And the bottom line, it's not going to be good for patient care. And one of the root, one of the premises is that uh, basically black doctors were, are patient, black patients like black doctors better and Hispanic like, like Hispanic doctors better and this, that, and the other stuff. And that's great. And I probably think there is some truth to that. But what we, what are we going to do? Are we going to go back to segregated waiting rooms, segregated doctors, segregated this? Am I going to walk up to a patient and say, sorry, you're not the color I am. I'm not going to take care of you. Um, where, where, 
here's the end point with that. And the, these folks don't think five steps down the road. So hmm. anyway, I'm fighting it. We're going to take federal funding away from schools that persist in this nonsense. Dr. Murphy, thank you. We do appreciate thank that. You, you so got much. another one, anybody? I have one more quick okay. question. This is Kelly. Um, so yesterday I saw in the news that President Biden had made a statement to Israel that they were not going to support Israel um, retaliating against Iran. So let's say Israel does retaliate, which I think they should. Um, what do you think will happen from Biden's statements? Well, I mean, we uh, we assisted in helping, uh, you know, take down a bunch of missiles and drones and everything like that, which is absolutely what we should be. No. I, w I would have to agree. I do not believe we should be assisting in any offensive measures against Iran. Now, that said that we're still early in this conflict. Um, but, uh, you know, Iran, unless it does something that gets past that really is a, a big issue that we believe a declaration of war is in order, uh, I would hope we all just take a deep breath, take a pause. Um, Israel has every reason to retaliate. I mean, they, he went. They, Israel went after the uh, the guys that ch caused all this stuff, the, the uh, Iranian generals. Mm -hmm. And guys, let me just give you a little point of reference. I know I've talked a lot. But, um, is that uh, uh, a year and a few months ago? Uh, no, yeah, a year and a few months ago, I was in uh, I Israel, and we were in a kibbutz, kafarzat, that you could look over and see the Gaza Strip. We spent most of the day there um, eating with them, visiting in their homes, talking with some of their military individuals. And those individuals, I have, I have uh, been told by APAC that every single one of them is either dead or kidnapped. Oh, oh wow. And it, not, not dead in a nice manner, but butchered. And I've seen, uh, I've seen film on the taken by the Hamas uh, GoPros that would, and I have a pretty decent stomach as a surgeon, um, that would just devastate people if they, if they ever saw it. Yep, so, they're butchers. Um, I've seen the heinous crimes, and for those to say that's a hoax, we have those protesters in D.C. Um, is, is anathema to what anything of good standing should be. Doctor, as always, thanks for what you do. You. And uh, I do have thanks, one comment Greg. about DEI. I I think that perhaps uh, to end on a light note that we should include DEI or at least the I part of DEI and maybe Donald Trump could get a second place trophy for 2020. What? Uh, uh, that's so funny. <laughs> okay. so, it's just crazy. It's a crazy world. It is. We see that the, the, the things that they push are absolutely destructive to society and just not going to let it happen. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Greg. All right, guys. God bless. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Okay. Uh, we do have one more caller here. We have uh, Bill back. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, good morning, good morning. And I was calling, I guess, when I, Dr. Murphy had said that the, uh, you know, they're thinking about boosting in the uh, corporate income tax again, mm -hmm. where Donald Trump had lowered it. And it made me think about the election and how it went from the Republicans to the Democrats when uh, President Bush uh, back in the 80s, had said no, no, no new taxes. And where Donald Trump has lined up the country's uh, corporate investors to get more money through, you know, buy, buying stock. And the dividend rate should go up with the corporate tax being dropped. That, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Democrats, President Bush said no new taxes because people are thinking of a U.S. sales tax. And all of a sudden, it, you know, the Democrats won the election. So it sort of lined them up to have the, the uh, balanced budget issue come up again, as it did with President Clinton after President Bush, to possibly put in a U.S. sales tax because people would have more money to spend since the corporate tax rates had been lowered. And, you know, it would be, okay, the corporate tax is lowered, more people have money to spend. If there was a half a percent sales tax going in the United States, 
it wouldn't be that uh, that you know detrimental to people's pocketbooks just because they they could make it more money from the corporation uh, taxes being lowered. That was just a, a, a weird, you know. I just was thinking of that when Doctor Murphy was talking about that. Okay. All right, so we got to run. We got a weather to do. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, Thanks. Was, uh, and again, Thank if the U.S. doesn't do it, then you know it would give more room for the uh, state and the county governments to do it. Okay. Hey, Bill, appreciate anyway, it, sir. Just a thought. All right. Bye, bye. Marine forecast brought to you by each day at this time by Community Prevention Services of Jacksonville. Later this morning, local law enforcement agencies at about ten o'clock are going to be revealing some of the work they've been doing for the past couple of weeks involving a growing problem, not just here in Oslo and the surrounding area, but across the country. It's called vaping. Community Prevention Services recognize this problem in the very beginning. And the team has been counseling young people about the dangers of the habit. The uh, counselors will tell you that all too often, vaping, supposedly innocent and safe, is anything but. Parents, you need to know what's going on. And you you are not going to get the full story, not even a half-truth from your children. Talk with the staff at Community Prevention Services. If you think there's a problem in your home, you can bet the problem is definitely there. Community Prevention Services accepts most insurance plans. Give them a call today at 910-353-0972. And, Kelly, that number again is? 910-353-0972. Is what I said the truth? It's You did good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we got something... It's got to be done. True. And you guys, you guys are out there and uh, folks, uh, you know, seek out some assistance before it gets to be a crisis with, with your kids. Staff. Yes. Okay. We're headed that away. Mm -hmm. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, AM. WDSME weather is next. SME. The best deal for the grill is at Jones LP Gas and Oil Company each Friday. Every Friday from 8 a.m. till closing at 5. Jones LP Gas and Oil Company will fill your 20-pound LP gas grill cylinder for only $11. You heard that right. Each Friday till closing, you can have your 20-pound LP gas cylinder filled for only $11 at Jones Gas and Oil Company. 3881 Wilmington Highway in heart of Verona. In addition to saving money on your LP gas for the grill, Jones Gas and Oil is your full-service gas and oil company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural gas and oil needs, as well as gas appliances, LP replacement parts, fill cylinders, and tinkless water heaters, and they offer it. 10% military discount on installation. Remember to get that cylinder filled every Friday until closing for only $11. Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881, the Old Wilmington Highway, Verona. Phone 910-346-6384. If you plan to rebuild, remodel, repair, or do cottage or home improvements, Williams Hardware, 311B Bridges Street, Morris City, should be your first stop. Williams Hardware carries power tools and equipment, chains and fasteners, plumbing and electrical supplies, along with Gerber, Buck, and Case Knives. Williams Hardware is your helpful handy hardware store. Williams Hardware cuts glass to size and cuts and threads pipe. When the chores are done and the cleanup is finished, light up that Wilmington grill from Williams Hardware. Williams Hardware, 3011 B. Bridge Street, Morris City. Open Monday through Saturday from 7.30 to 6 p.m. And Sundays for your convenience, noon till 5. Phone Williams Hardware, 252-726-7158. If your plans include hitting the road this year to do some traveling, make sure of visit to Silent Service Center is on your to-do list. Travel safety starts with the tires on your vehicle, and a visit to Silent Service Center will give you peace of mind with the best value in all neighboring tires and the largest selection of used tires in this area. In addition to quality tires, Silent Service Center is a North Carolina inspection station and does complete brake service, oil changes, and alignment service. Silent Service Center, 1707 Lejeune Boulevard, Jacksonville, and Street Hadlock, phone 910-353-4760. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Chino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Chino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Chino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, we're back here. Offshore.
Today Long is short. looking pretty good for you guys who want to get out there for the next couple of days. Uh, southwesterly winds today, 15 to 20 knots, seas 3 to 5 feet, dominant period 5 seconds, sounds and rivers are choppy. Tomorrow, southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet, dominant period 7. Seven seconds, sounds and rivers, only a moderate chop. And on Wednesday, southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas coming down 2 to 3 feet, sounds and rivers, a moderate chop. Today, sunny, high of 88, winds 8 to 11 miles an hour with 20 mile an hour gusts. gusts. Tonight, clear, low of 63, with gusts as high as 16 miles an hour. Tomorrow, sunny, high of 85. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, low of 61. And on Wednesday, sunny, high of 80, with 17 mile an hour gusts mm -hmm. you know um, lee kind of touched on this during a conversation with dr murphy biden is uh, reportedly advising israel that it may not have to retaliate against iran thanks to its overwhelming success in intercepting the about 300 missiles and drones launched by tehran on saturday well part of those 300s that were intercepted were intercepted by us right. and other countries a whole bunch of people went to the aid but think about this. Biden's team says the successful interceptions were a major victory for Israel and sent a message to Iran and other regional adversaries. Wait a minute. Now, hold on just here for just a second. So I'm out here. They're going to walk my dog down the street here at dusk tonight. And some guy comes by and he opens fire. And because he misses me, I'm not supposed to retaliate. Is that the way it sounds <laughs> to you? He missed. Yeah. You didn't hit anything. I was able to a duck or you're just a bad shot what do you think is going to happen at that point in time i'm just going to say oh no problem go about your business reload get some more bullets get some more missiles come back again sometime right maybe you'll get lucky next time i watched that for about four hours on saturday they were showing life scenes from yeah. israel but it was crazy if, if you don't think that a reasonable person and i think netanyahu is about as reasonable as you can get and he's uh, experienced on his belt Mr. Biden does not have, or any of our other presidents ever, well, since, I guess, George Washington, he's got experience that they don't have. Yeah. What do you think a reasonable person would do? Like, if you, if you will give me the privilege of calling me reasonable for a minute, what do you think that I'm going to do out here? Somebody drives by and starts shooting at me, and they'll, they miss. Yes, I'm just going to say wave and say goodbye. Have a good day. I personally know you would not do that, but is that what the president wants Israel to do? What would happen? Yes, I, I do think that's what, what he would wants happen Israel if today. we had 300 missiles launched into Washington D.C. or into Delaware. What do you think Mr. Biden would be doing then? Yeah. Would he say, "Oh, just because they didn't hit anything"? and we were able to take them down, and I'm okay. Do you think that he would tell the military to stand down and not return fire? I don't know. Good question. If he does, he needs to come visit your couch. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if any other countries told us to stand down, what would we do? I think we would say we do what we want. Yeah, That's this what is I I think we would this say, is well, our I business. Know, it's not yours. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, what country is it that was uh, where they were celebrating the launch of those three hundred missiles and and drones? Quite Saturday? a few countries, actually. A bunch of countries. Yeah, yeah. I don't get it. Oh, I get it. You know, um, something we haven't heard a lot of on the media since over the weekend is about the stabbing in Australia that killed six people at the mall. Yeah. Well, nobody because got shot. Involved guns. Nobody got yeah. shot. Come I on, agree. it's okay. Nobody yeah. got shot. And there's no blood po uh, lead poisoning there. Yeah, not a big deal, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what people are saying or thinking. Yeah. You know, and over the past what five or ten years or something, the number of machete attacks in mm -hmm. uh, any number of, of countries involving yeah. terrorism is terrorist act. They're doing it. And they had said, I had heard something very briefly over the week weekend that they and i need to check this out to make sure it's true or not that australia supposedly has a very tough knife law i don't know what that means i need to look it up unless <laughs> well, it's crocodile okay. dundee yeah. days yeah. <laughs> we talked about that a couple yeah. weeks ago didn't we I, I think up. i 
they I heard it briefly in passing. You know, my mother watches the news 24 seven and I was walking by and heard it. But that's I haven't done any research. But I mean, six people very quickly in a mall, um, a little mm -hmm. nine month old babies baby, in, yes. in the hospital when the yeah. mother was killed. Yeah. And I mean, because it doesn't take, you know, but we're so focused on guns in this country that we, you know, forget all the other weapons that are just as deadly. Yeah. Yeah. I've said before, you know, the guy I killed his two kids and himself with a meat cleaver. Yeah. Right there on, um, right off, I think it was Bank Street, but New River. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the early 60s, I believe it was. On a Sunday. Very sad. Very sad. Um, and then the, uh, the guy that was stabbed to death, uh, lying on a pool table in a place called Mary's Place, uh, a little joint there in Richlands back in the 70s. Uh, he, he was stabbed to death with a broken pool stick. Oh, wow. Gr gruesome scene. Former President Trump's trial stemming from Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's investigation into hush money payments. They claim he made ahead of the 2016 presidential election is supposed to be underway this morning with the jury selection. I don't know how long that's going to take. I would say that's going to take between now and months. November. <laughs> no, I don't know. They don't get how, you so find it, uh, uh, how are you going to find any human that has not heard anything about it? Well, you know, they always it. ask, what have you heard? Well, have you heard? I, I, have you heard anything about it? Yeah, I've heard about it. Did you form an opinion as to the guilt or innocence of this individual as a result of it? Um, well, yeah, I mean, there, uh, evidence that was presented on TV was overwhelming. So, well, you're excused. Well, how many people are going to lie to get on that jury, especially if they're like a Why would you want to be on that jury? I would not. I'm here to tell you, I'd make up whatever excuse I had to to get out oh, of that. I, you know, I, pull that diarrhea I, excuse out if you want yeah, to, but whatever. I would bring out something. <laughs> I'd have some kind of sickness because I think this is going to drag on. These people aren't going to be able to work. I mean, because they're going to be. You, there, this, this is not like a three-day trial. Yep. Yeah. Not unless Trump, uh, Trump says, I'm guilty. Oh, he's not going to say that. I know that, but that's the only way to be a three-day yeah, trial. There's, there's going to be people going there, oh, yes, I can judge this. And I can be bipartisan and I can be unbiased. But, you know, they want the fame. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They want to be on there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I just, I just. Only time I don't care only who you are. I think you're going to have a hard time finding anybody impartial. People are going to have an opinion one one way or the other. What's going to, what's rough is he's going to be in there today while they're interviewing jurors and he's not allowed to say a thing. Yep. No he's way. Eat yep. him no up. way will he be he's able been to do given it. a gag or whatever. Yeah. There is no, if he can do this, <laughs> I'm going to be shocked. Uh, they better There's gag no him. Or literally, they better gag him. I, I don't think, I'm telling you, I'm going to go on record saying I don't think he can do it. I don't think he can sit there and not make a comment, a, under his breath comment. There's microphones right there. I do not think he has the ability. I just don't. His looks are going to be all the. Oh, he's going to make faces. I, yeah. I hope they televise it because I'll be watching. <laughs> I know you'll be watching. You have to keep me updated. It takes me throughout the day and the, between uh, clients, I look because I got there's when no I way. Got called to on for a jury trial on two occasions. I think I was called. I actually made it into the box, and uh, one of them, the uh, the uh, judge said, uh, and, "And you are a police officer?" And I said, "I am." He said, "Well, is there?" Anything that would have caused that you know about this case that would have caused you to form an opinion about the guilt or innocence of these defendants, two guys, right? Your I'll Honor, yep. <laughs> Your Honor, am I supposed to be honest with you, perfectly honest with you? <laughs> of course. I said, if they weren't guilty, we wouldn't have arrested them. Well, I was done. Well, you were done. You could step down, Mr. Brown. <laughs> well, I've only You're been on And so did the other 11 people up there. Well, I don't, yes. I mean, I've been called twice. I had to serve once. It was a murder trial. Did you. Yep. My very first jury time, it was a murder trial. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to start. Yeah. Yeah. It was rough. It lasted a, a week, a week and a half or a week. I can't remember that's now. Fairly yeah. short. Must have been yeah. cut and dry. Yeah. It was, I mean, a lot of defense, a lot drug of drug deal gone bad here. It was a, here. A lot of uh, prosecution uh, evidence presented, right? That was a lot. It was, yeah, I mean, it was almost very, they even found the weapon. I mean, very yeah. cut and dry. Yeah. But we had to go through the whole. So your week. mind was made up before you said. Down. No, um, <laughs> there, there was two two individuals, and one of them initially it was it could have gone either way, but then right towards the end there was enough compelling evidence where you knew they were both guilty. Because mm -hmm. when I went into it, I was like, I don't know, and, 
And then the more evidence that was shown, you knew. And then at the end, you knew it completely. Well, I've gone many of a time and never served. The second and time they I got always, out of it. They, well, they, always they, they, they threw me off of both of them. Threw me off of everything. It <laughs> might be that post office t-shirt with the bullet holes in it that I wore. I don't know. We, we have a caller. I think I know who this is. Good morning. Deplorables. Hello, adorable. Hey, Theo. I don't want to call you deplorables, but it looks like after you vote for Trump again, and it's going to go for another few years. How do you think I'm going to vote for Trump again? So, yeah, really? Yeah, really. really. He might just say that. Who I'm not that voting that for. Your forehead. I will not sit at it. I will not sit it out, but it's I do not. over you. I, 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 you it's not all over me. Skip that, Listen, skip that you're part. comparing one stabbing because it was a knife to all the mass shootings that we have here. Is There's not one, st doing? It's not one, one stabbing. stabbing. You're making a big deal with a knife, okay? Because <laughs> the man went crazy. Now, there's a man that went crazy, okay? <laughs> and he stabbed a whole mess of people. And now you're going to compare it to how many stabbing, how many mass shootings have we had up to up to now, Rayford? You, I don't you, know. You're good but with mass. I, I, how many I don't, have we had now? I don't know now. But what what, what well, do you, you call? Know. Hold on, you Theo. Know. Let me ask a question. Already. Let me ask a question before you continue. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll give you a chance to answer. Uh, what do you call a mass shooting? How do you define it? Two or three more people getting shot. Well, that's a mass that's shooter. What, that's what that I know. It's it, it, it's definition. Uh, two or three or more people. Yeah, it varies depending on who you ask. I think the FBI says three, and somebody else says five or whatever. But anyway, okay. so it. So it how many have you had in this country that you're making a big deal? Now that man, I could say he, he, he something happened and he went you know a little haywire. But what happens to all these people over here that are doing this mass shooting with guns? What would you say anyway, about the? What would you say I about the? Point. What would you say okay, about the two? One. What, one. what would you say about the two guys in Chicago Saturday that shot, shot up a, a, a family gathering and shot eleven people, mm -hmm. and they're gang related, can't legally own a gun, and Chicago got the toughest gun control laws there are in the country, including a kid, well, and, and a killed problem. a kid. I mean, they can't fix that for how many years now? How many years? How many mayors have gone to fix that? And they have. You don't. Fixed, you I don't, don't know what's going on you, over there. You don't, I don't need a mayor. About that specific place. That oh. has a problem. We're talking about across the nation. Okay? And shooting kids. All right? School shooting. Well, there were three kids shot. Very well, sad. One was killed. That's anyway, very sad. Yeah. What's the next uh, one? The next one is uh, Murphy should have stayed as a doctor. When he turned into a politician, he's not really that good. He doesn't want to talk about the 2020 election. We had an election and everything, and, and the whole country's up, uh, upside down because they think the, 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 the election was stolen, but he keeps talking about Afghanistan. Every time he comes on your show, he's always pinpointing Afghanistan, how we got out of there, and what happened. Blames Biden for everything. I was in Israel. tell him that, that Trump right. made the, had a meeting with the Taliban. He's the reason why we left as, as the way we left. And how come the Taliban didn't protect our people on the way out? Ask him that. Okay? He don't want to talk about 2020, but He's always bringing Afghanistan. Now I'm going to jump over to Chris. To who? Chris. Okay. Marks. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, Donald Trump went and gave tax cuts to the rich. I don't remember you coming over here and saying that, ta that, that he gave money, your money, to the rich because they didn't pay extra taxes like they were supposed to. Now that we're helping the kids that have their... They're 17, 18 year old, and they're still paying their student loan because of the interest for 20, 15, 20, 25 years. Now, all of a sudden, that's a big deal to you. Okay? So, let me tell you what. My, I want my money to go to these kids, and you, you take your money and give it to the, to the rich. Okay? That's all. I want my tax money to go help these kids pay off those student loans, the interest, and everything else. And you go ahead and pay uh, the, the rich. Don't have them pay the tax. Okay? We're even on that. I'm done. Okay. I know I got a tax. Thank cut. you. All right. You guys have a good I day. Keep you too. Bad work. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try. We'll get, get, keep your blood boiling. Let's take a break. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 11 20 AM, WSME. Freedom 97.1. Mohawk All Pet Protection and Warranty is the only cover protection and warranty for all pets, all accidents, all the time. Because your pets are family members too. No matter how 
how you live. We got you covered. Soft, luxurious, smart strand forever clean carpet. Gorgeous, durable, solid tech, luxury vinyl tile. Mohawk has the ultimate floor for every room in your home. That's suitable for all pets. For details, contact Watkins Floor Covering online at WatkinsNewFloor.com. Watkins Floor Covering. Thanking you for voting them the best of the best for 2023 in the flooring covering and carpet cleaning category. Watkins Floor Covering, they're more than just floors. It's custom showers, custom tubs, carpet cleaning. Backsplashes, bathrooms, commercial, retail, and home flooring, too. Watkins Floor Covering. Family owned and operated since 1997. With locations in Jacksonville and Surf City. Watkins Floor Covering. You stand on it. We stand behind it. Tammy Fry Allstate Swan. Swansboro reminds you to check your mailbox and find your quote on homeowners insurance. Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro goes the extra mile to make sure you're in good hands, like helping you customize your home and windstorm coverage with their write your own home policy. Yes. Save even more when you bundle your home, auto, boat, motorcycle, and even your golf cart. Remember, if it rolls or floats, call Tammy for a quote. You and everything you own are in good hands with Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro. Call today, 910-326-5383. Tammy Fry Allstate, 638 West Corbett Avenue in the friendly city by the sea, Swansboro. Check your mailbox today for savings on your homeowner's insurance. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many, many more at your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store. Down home, down the street, good things cost less. Main Street in Maysville. Prime fresh bone-in quarter slice pork loin, $1.59 a pound. Family pack center cut bone-in thick pork chops, $2.59 a pound. Half cut boneless ribeye loin, $9.99 a pound. Whole sirloin tips, $3.99 a pound. Whole pork tenderloin, $2.59 a pound. Springer Mountain Farm. Um, split fryer breast, just two ninety nine a pound. Boneless ribeye steaks, ten ninety nine a pound. Over to produce, delicious North Carolina grown red ripe strawberries, one pound package, two ninety nine. Sweet extra large cantaloupes, two ninety nine each. Western delicious apples, ninety nine cents a pound. One pint Georgia fresh blueberries, three ninety nine. Fresh yellow or bicolored corn, three ninety nine a package. Crisp broccoli. Crowns, $1.79 a pound, and three 12 pack, 12 ounce cans of Pepsi products, $14. And make sure you ask about pig perks and join the pig rewards program today. That's your locally owned and operated Pig the Wiggly store, down home, down on the street, where good things cost less. Main Street, downtown Maysville. Remember, say big with the pig. <laughs> Since the 1930s, people have trusted the local law offices of attorney John Drew Warwick for personal injury family law representation, and traffic offenses. That's over 90 years serving the legal needs of people throughout Onslow County, which makes the law offices of John Drew Warley your hometown law firm. So when you need the services of an attorney, and at some point most people will, the law offices of attorney John Drew Warley is here for you. For an appointment, phone 910-455-7700 or visit their location, 313 New Bridge Street, right here in downtown Jacksonville. It's, it's live and local. Real Talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. <laughs> I was hoping we'd uh, get a chance to hear from you again today, Vic. What's, did we ask you the did ask the right questions? You guys were brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Th thank you for getting to it. And thank you, Ms. Lee, for accurately uh, asking what I asked you to say. I mean, you guys couldn't have been better. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. And um, as for what Congressman Murphy said, I was very much pleased with his answer to the first question about the 2020 election. Um, the fact that he served on the, the committee investigating all the charges of fraud and uh, factually adding that there was no evidence that um, Donald Trump won that election. Um, I, I was very, very pleased with that. As you anticipated, I would be, Mr. Ray. Not a doubt in my mind. And I, I knew what the doctor was going to answer. I knew how he would answer. Yes, sir. Yeah, and because and back in 2020, he might he signed to certify Pennsylvania, but he's, he would not sign to certify Arkansas. That was back in 2020. A lot of things have transpired 
A lot of stuff has come out. So everyone, anyone has the right to change what they feel from what happened in 2020. Based upon the evidence presented at That's that time. Right. We're, we're all in agreement. Yes, okay. we are, Vic. I was not so pleased, however, when uh, Congressman Murphy asked why this question keeps coming up. And uh, that disappointed me for two reasons. Number one, because I, I watched a lot of uh, Donald Trump's speeches at his rallies, and he brings it up every time and repeatedly. Yes, Donald Trump does. I, I think what he was, yes, he I, I'm going to take a go out on a, on a, a, a one spot here. I think what he was referring to, why do people keep asking me about this? Because I keep answering it the same way. I, okay. That's. That's the opinion. That's the feeling that I got when he responded to it. Um, that, that's a valid interpretation. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just referring to what I heard uh, the congressman said. Okay. So that, that's one reason is that Donald Trump and the MAGA crowd in general keep hammering that the election was stolen. Second reason, and Ms. Lee, you can help me out on this. I've heard from various media that that question appears on any application for employment at the RNC. No, that's not true. Huh? That's not true. Okay. Okay. Like, you know, um, Will Rogers said, I, you know, I only know what I read in the newspaper. Oh, I'm sorry about that. But I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But, that's a whole nother. Another thing, but, news, media. Mm. Okay. Um, but like I say, um, I've heard that from, you know, various news sources. Right. And, we'll uh, ask Michael Watley when he calls in, hopefully it'll be this week. Yes, please, because he would be the person who knows for sure. Um, I'll write that down. Sure. Yeah. You're not going to talk uh, about whales? <laughs> the whales. Okay, let's talk about the whales. Congressman Murphy terribly disappointed me on that. Why? Uh, well, first of all, he answered as I, I pretty much knew he would be. Because, Rayford, on your show last time the congressman was on, before this, he had made that same assertion. Okay? And that, and that was two weeks after after Donald Trump at his rally in South Carolina, there had been two beachings that week uh, when he had his rally. Uh -huh. And he attributed uh, those whales dying to wind, offshore wind turbines. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it was like the congressman had picked up the Donald Trump you know, playbook and run with it. And that he's still running with it Again, again, was disappointing. Well, I, you know, I, I, said, I'd, I'd hate to say that somebody would think that I was a Trump person or a Biden person if I agreed with either one of them on an occasion. Mm -hmm. uh, um, be that as may be, um, in his in his answering that question, Congressman Murphy said it's his opinion. Yes. Okay, and that. Is terribly disappointing uh, because the causes of those whales' death, um, while mysterious, um, there is no factual data that offshore wind turbines had anything to do with it. Okay, there there has been no scientific evidence. Zero uh, zip nada. I, I think he, like me. First of all, he was discounting the far, uh, part about they were being collided with their ships and all that sort of good stuff. So that wasn't mm -hmm. the reason for their deaths. That was part of what he was referring to. But the part that uh, I have read and from some scientists who supposedly know a whole lot more than I do, thank God, is that the frequencies generated. And I, I did some studies even back in high school and right after high school with underwater hydrophonics, with a, uh, underwater microphones 
own listening to mm -hmm. critters underwater. Okay. And on, when I'm diving, it's not a silent world down there. Like Jacques Cousteau's, Jacques Cousteau's book and a film that was put out at one time. It's not a silent world. It's very noisy underwater. Uh, not from just bubbles, but from all the other things that are happening, the critters that are making noises, da, da, da. So there are noises generated, and I used to listen to them. I recorded them on an old battery-powered reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder way back when. I didn't record any whales that I know of because I wouldn't have known one at that time if I'd heard one. But there, those whales, and we do know they navigate, as do porpoises, by sonar, right? By putting yes, out, sir. they putting out noises underwater, and they reflect back. Yada yada, and if that okay, no, 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 wait, wait a minute, because I have some background <laughs> okay, in marine biology as well. Okay, uh huh. And and you're trying to tell me that the noise generated by the, these big propellers is is making whales go crazy? No, I didn't say that. I'm talking okay, about. Okay, I'm talking or, about or, or, or from the wind or turbines. Is, there is a frequency range that it continuously. It puts out the same frequency all the time that is heard. And those and, turbines are how far above I, the surface? Yeah, but <laughs> have you ever been underwater? Yes, sir, many times. Diving? <laughs> um, I can't scuba because of my ears. Okay. But I've I been have, underwater, I and I can hear boats. I can hear boats I, uh, from oh, miles so away. I, I've, done, I've done that, you know, many, many times because I've felt like I was about to get run over. Uh huh. Okay. But uh, the idea that a, a, an offshore wind turbine is doing something to whales is. I'm, I'm not going to discount. In I'm, my book, preposterous. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm not going to discount it until I hear proof otherwise. Either way, I'm not going to discount it. How can you prove something is not happening? Okay. Okay. You, you know, there's plenty of reasons. And that's another reason. Well, all right. How can you prove uh, it? We're. We're running out of time, Vic, and we can argue this at earlier in the show if you want to, but right now we run out of time. Well, we got yes, to sign I, off on that. I appreciate that, right. and uh, thanks, thanks for the use of the You're welcome. Man. You're live in local Real Talk. Don't go away. We'll be right back, and I think we have time for one more caller that's holding on the line. WSME. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richland's Morgan offices of Lane and Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane and Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurance including military. Lane & Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DD. DS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper in print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the Perfect Ed, we can do that too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. When you need comforting, who do you call? An old friend, right? Jacksonville Heating Contractors services the heating and cooling needs of our area with dependable quality train systems, guaranteeing indoor comfort for your home or business. In addition to quality train systems, Jacksonville Heating Contractors offers 24-hour emergency service, Nate certified technicians, and over 50 years of experience and service you can trust. And with a Jacksonville Heating Contractor Service Agreement, you never pay retail for heating or cooling services and receive priority scheduling. 
Remember, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in New Bern, you can call Trent Heating and Air Conditioning, 252-633-2200. In Moorhead City, Sea Air Heating and Cooling, 252-247-1122. If you need service or repairs, just call an old friend. Jacksonville Heating Contractors, an independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. For deals on train systems and more, visit anoldfriend.com or call 910-347-2843. For 40 years now, people through a... Of Jacksonville and Onslow County have trusted Barnes Diamond Gallery for all their jewelry needs for every special occasion. They understand that every day is a special event for someone, whether celebrating a wedding, anniversary, birthday, engagement, or graduation. Let Barnes Diamond Gallery custom design something for you. Barnes Diamond Gallery does on-site repair in addition to their quality and selection of diamonds. Diamond fashion bands, pendants, watches, earrings, gemstone rings, and necklaces for anyone for any occasion. Major credit cards accepted. Layaway available. Barnes Diamond Gallery offers appraisals and pay top market prices for gold and silver. Barnes Diamond Gallery, 461 Western Boulevard, Suite 120, Jacksonville. Open 930 to 5. 30, Monday through Friday. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, we're back and we got just a very short period of time. time. Is yeah. this Steve? Yeah. Hey, Steve. Good yeah. We're go up against the clock, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, I probably called in a little too late. I didn't know your last call was going to run quite so long. <laughs> Neither did, did I. But, uh, yeah, I, I'll make my comment quick as I can, um, is that, you know, you talk about why everybody keeps talking about the 2020 election. And it's because, like the, uh, one caller said, Donald Trump keeps going around saying it every week. The leading candidate for the Republican Party is still telling the American people that the election was stolen from him. Uh -huh. And he, we know now that that was not true true and these representatives will not own that they will not own that they were wrong they keep trying to put uh, stipulations and little you know uh, clauses in there to still cast doubt on the election mm -hmm. and instead of just owning the fact that they they came out and claimed something that was not true well our, our representative from the third Trump district our, our representative from the third district said no it's not true i know he did but he's not owning the fact that he did say it was true that they stood up there and told us they he had evidence to prove it was true when they didn't, and he's not owning that fact. He's trying to make out like it was okay that he was wrong, and nobody should point that out. So well, you're going to hold him accountable for something that came up four years ago, three years ago? You're going to hold him responsible for what, until he's dead? Well, my problem is, is that um, he told something that was untrue then, and today on his show, he, he told y'all several that things time. that was untrue today. So my problem is, Raper, just like you, I'm, I don't like somebody who doesn't tell the truth is constantly trying to snowball me, trying to pull okay. the wool over my eyes. Right. That's what Bob Murphy did to y'all today. I definitely I'd, the wool over your totally eyes. disagree. I think he just changed his mind once he got more facts, but yeah, that's just my opinion. That's my opinion only. That, that's, that's the way I but, saw it. I yeah, mean, he told, he told things that if you fact check are absolutely wrong. He said it on there today. I, want, I can't go down the list. We don't have time, obviously, but he did. He told these things today that were not true. Okay. So, All I'm right. Fact checking. Steve, yep. appreciate your call. Sir, thank you. Bye. Got to go. go. All oh, right. Wow. Tomorrow morning we have a young lady coming in. Is Carol? Carol Town. Carol, Carol Town is going to come in here. It's going to talk about some really cool stuff, some things that are happening in the area, and uh, uh, really cool. cool. Yes. Good stuff is going on. Big so, plant sale. A big plant sale. Not that kind of plants, y'all. Vic, don't get excited. <laughs> Not that kind of plant. And so uh, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big plant sale that's coming up on the 27th of April, I believe. So we'll. We'll hear more about that tomorrow, when, where, and how. And later this week, we've got Senator Tillis going to be joining 8 o'clock on Tuesday. Thursday, I'm Thursday. sorry, 8 o'clock on right. Thursday. He'll be joining us uh, by phone. So we'll be chatting with him. Get your questions ready. Get them to him in advance. Get us, get them to us in mm -hmm. advance. And we'll try to ask them at that point in time, as mm -hmm. Vic did. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m., WSME. Fox News is now. And then about 10 o'clock, we get another dose of the day. LEDs, and Rick will chunk it over to Hollywood, the man, at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. WSME, Camp